Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh my God, you are beautiful. Look at all of you. Well, I am legendary producer Don Hahn. <laughs> and with me are legendary animators John Pomeroy, my good friend, and Mark Han. <laughs> And these guys, these guys have animated some of the most amazing things, and all of your friends on the screen, including Mickey Mouse, uh, come out of the pencils of these gentlemen. We're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna talk a lot about Mickey uh, and how he um, kind of came to life. Yes. In a segment cleverly titled, Animating Mickey Through the Years. <laughs> these guys love animating, and they animate with computers as well, but they started out their careers animating with a pencil the old-fashioned way. Now, to illustrate our show today, I put in some really cool slides from, John, from your new book. Yeah, so this is from uh, Walt's Imagination, and this panel shows Walt directing um, the little girl, I think it was Virginia Davis? Uh, Virginia yeah, Davis. she was one of them. Yeah, in one, in one of the first Alice, Alice. cartoons. So we're, she's being photographed against a, a bed sheet, probably. <laughs> in Kansas City, Missouri, the Lapagram's Pictures was founded at this place. Yes which we visited. We were, John and I went on a 20-city tour for a movie called Atlantis, The Lost Empire. We did. We're still on that tour. We're still on that tour. Yeah, we haven't come and back yet. visited this place, and it's so cool to <laughs> see right. this. Like, Disney history is so interesting. Um, Walt said it all started with a mouse. It actually all started with a rabbit. Yeah, yeah Oswald. Oswald, yeah. yeah. If you want to be true, yeah. So, at, you know, and they just discovered that new Oswald uh, uh, cartoon that was like half of it in Japan. Like somebody had it in their closet. They saw oh, Dave Bossert's really? book on Oswald the Rabbit and they said, I have yeah, an Oswald that. cartoon. Oh my gosh. This was like in the last couple of days. Well, you need to collect. check your closets. You never know what you may have. Them. Yes, yeah. yes, just go, well, there's a joke there, but I won't say it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Another still from your book, John. Yeah, so this is uh, the development, first drawings of Mickey Mouse uh, were done by Ub Iwerks, another co worker with Disney back there, in the Kansas City days. There may not be a Mickey Mouse without Ub Iwerks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, here's another Stump the Animators, and I, I love this little piece of animator, animation here. <laughs> Very modest. So that's, that's, that's Ub. Sort. That's Ub Iwerks. It is Ub Iwerks. Yeah. In those early days, he was kind of Walt's right hand and entire production. He, he animated so much and so and he, fast. Like you guys, when you were animating, how much uh, screen time did you do a week, and how much did Ub do a week when he was doing this kind of animation? Oh gosh, I couldn't uh, tell you. He outranked us. He was doing maybe 25, 30 feet a week. Wow, so yeah. which is, I mean, cranking it's, out. Yeah, so. which is about uh, 15 or 20 seconds of animation. Yeah, and yeah. a normal anima animator on a good week might do four or five seconds. Four or five, yeah. right. So right. amazing, amazing animator. And in, to give credit to also, Minnie is joining Mickey. Yes. So more about her soon. Yes. It's good. What is, what is this we're looking at? So this is a panel also from the book. This is showing the popularity of Mickey Mouse as he's taking off uh, during the Depression era. Uh, uh, the marquee features. Um, Steamroller Mickey. And so his popularity is really taking over in 1930, 32, 33. The watches are coming out, the toys, the dolls, and all the, the merchandise is starting to really enhance his popularity with, you know, with Depression era America. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. I have an unrehearsed question. Um, there's this kind of uh, mythology out there that Mickey was drawn with a quarter and two dimes. True or false? I think there's some truth to that. There might be. And maybe really? a few nickels, yeah. too. I don't yeah. know. Wow. But, yeah, but I, think, I think that that's probably could be very true. That's maybe with so the cleanup artists. There, there, was an old, there was a fixture uh, by the name of Johnny Bond, who yes. taught a lot of us how to in between. And yep. he basically said, yes, the quarter was this size, Mickey, and yep. the ears was the dime. Yeah. So, yeah. So all of you later on, if you have a quarter and two dimes. You're all set. Yeah. You're all set. <laughs> um, Mickey, uh, boy, I think he was a huge, huge hit. Um, another page from your book, John. What's this? Yeah, this is this is outside the theater. Mark. Well, this is the Mickey, the Mickey drawing. The you're Mickey pointing premiere, to, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, the interesting thing about this is is if you look closely at the date on the top of this, it's October 30th, 1929. It's the day after something very important in America that happened on October 29th, 1929. Ooh, that was the crash. Stock market crash. Stock market market crash. crash. Not so not if good. you were Walt Disney and Roy Disney and a very clever guy, you would rush to the patent office the day after the stock market crash <laughs> and uh, put a patent on Mickey. This was mainly for consumer products and for uh, 
you know, watches and that kind of thing. But I just think it's so interesting. It's literally the day after the stock, stock and market crash. You know what? Crash. The timing couldn't have been better for the entrance of Mickey Mouse because he brought hope to a lot of people yeah. that were desperate back then. Yeah. Walt became just not an entertainer, but a merchant of hope. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still is. Cool. Um, Oh, well, let's take a look at Steamboat Willie because I think that's uh, what's coming up next. And yeah. I want you guys to just kind of enjoy what audiences enjoyed when this short first came out. So let's take a look at this next clip. There he is. <laughs> it's just terrific. 90 years ago. Yeah. It's 90 years ago. 90, 90 years, years ago. ago. It's hard to believe. Wow. Um, and of course, Mickey led to his ensemble of characters, uh, you know, the Fab Five or Six or Ten, yeah. uh, Donald and Goofy and Pluto and that kind of thing. And um, Pete. And Pete. Don't and forget Pete. Pete. Yes. yes who had we need a villain element. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, Mark, um, talk about Mickey's model, because over the years he's changed a lot, and he's always Mickey, but he looks different, and, and what's the deal with that? Well, as we'd already alluded to, that in the early days, they probably literally did use quarters and dimes to, uh, to draw Mickey, but he was you know, a product of the style of that era. If you look at Oswald, you can see hints of Mickey's design early on. Obviously, the ears shrank. But uh, just the very basic, you know, circle for a head, a circle for a body with a little connective uh, tissue to hold the head to the body. And it was a pretty simple, what we call rubber hose animation era. The arms didn't have a lot of joints. It was just kind of this rubber hosey kind of movement. And that was it. That was, again, a reflection of the style. And the animators at the studio were always looking for ways to improve, to get the animation much more expressive. So as Mickey evolved, uh, they started, you know, morphing the shapes a little bit, and largely the the body, particularly, I think, had the biggest change early on. It went from being just largely a circle with this connective, you know, lines, to more of a kind of a peanut shape, which allowed the animators a lot more flexibility, and a lot more expressive. Uh, uh, abilities for them to, you know, put the emotions across that they wanted. And here in the band concert, you kind of start to see that. He starts maybe look a little taller because they maybe lengthen that body out to give it a little more flexibility. So those are the, some of the kind of early uh, things. The one thing, too, in this area, it's what we call the pie eye period, which, you know, is largely he's just got these black black eyes with a little pie-shaped highlight. That's kind of where we get the term pie eye Mickey. And if you really look at the early, early ones, again, going even back to Oswald, it was that entire mask was really the eye and the black part were just the pupils. Because if you watch the animation, those pupils move around, you know, the whole head. It's not just, you know, the right where the black spot is. So that was kind of, you know, part, again, part of the design. That's why Mickey has that, you know, very unique mask shape. That was his entire eye. One of my favorite shows from that era is Lonesome Ghosts. Yes. And, Lonesome Ghosts, you know, excellent we piece. Just past Halloween, it seems right. We should look at a little clip from Lonesome Ghosts. So let's take a look at Mickey with the eyes and kind of the design that Mark was describing. Let's look at the next clip. <laughs> The telephone? Now you got to say that's probably the first 
Ghostbusters, yeah. really. It, it is. Really. Yeah. The original Ghostbusters. No, they, here. Here it they is. stole heavily from us. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah, it's so true. Um, so Mickey evolves even further when we get to uh, Brave Little Taylor, which I love. I absolutely yeah. adore this. Yeah. Um, and, and who is kind of responsible during this era for the, the look and feel of Mickey Mouse as we see him here? Well, we saw a picture there of one of the great animators of uh, Disney Classic Age, mm -hmm. Freddie Moore. Freddie Moore. Freddie Moore was kind of the mentor to the to our mentors, if yeah. you will. I mean, he mentored Ollie Johnston, Frank right. Thomas, Milt Call, yeah, and he left an imprint deep into the Disney look of animation back then. It's funny, when we think of the Nine Old Men, we think, oh, they were the originators of animation at Disney, yeah. but they weren't, they were there the were, second there generation. Was, there was, you know, what they called the four supervising animators, and Freddie was one of those. He yeah. had Bill Teitla and Norm Ferguson and uh, Ham Lusk. Yeah, were Lusk. Kind of the, yeah. They were, if you look at the credits on Snow White, they were the original supervising animators that then trained the nine old men, the Franks, the Milts, and the Ollies. And it was Fred, Fred Moore who actually pushed the, the Mickey model more than anybody yeah, else yeah. in its fluidity, in mm -hmm. the acting, uh, his persona really came to Joe. Yeah, mean, in fact, you see a signature in the upper right-hand corner. You see animator uh, F. Moore, and that's him, Jack Kenny, signing above it. Yeah. So uh, you, you see, and he he pushed the design of the dwarves too. Uh, Absolutely. In, yes. in yeah. Snow White and the oh, Seven yeah. Dwarves was very Freddie. He's Moore. kind of what we would consider the 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 godfather or grandfather of Disney appeal. As, as yeah. among yeah. the animators, when you think of Disney appeal, we always turn to Freddie Moore, and uh, he was kind of the one that laid those foundations. Yeah. Here's another uh, Mickey scene coming up here from uh, Brave Little Taylor that I'll play, and then uh, you guys can talk about what we're seeing here. Uh, here's Mickey, again, done with a pencil, go figure. <laughs> this was actually animated by uh, Frank Thomas. This yeah. was one of yeah. his early pieces, and again, Frank was learned from Freddie Moore. And I know Frank always talked about, you know, working so hard to, you know, emulate and, and you know, have his animation be as fluid and appealing as uh, Freddy's was. Frank was one of the uh, perfectionists of the Nine Old Man. He was very astute with his ability to make the character act and always keeping your guard up to make sure that the audience believed that character was real, always engaging what we call the willing suspension of disbelief. Yeah, exactly. And these guys were fine artists. They all went to Chenard, they went to Art oh, yeah. Center. Yeah. So they were like big time artists in their era who happened to express themselves in animation. Let's take a look at this next clip to see a little bit more of Mickey. Did you kill seven at one blow? So great. Uh, yes, Your Honor. And how? Well, how? <laughs> I was all alone. I heard them coming. I looked up, and I was surrounded. Yes? They were here, there, everywhere. A whole bunch of them. Hmm. They came at me from the right, from the left. Right, left, left, right. Yes, yes. Go on. They were coming closer. The fight was on. I swung and missed. I missed and swung. I swung again and again and again. They were right on top of me. And then? And then I let them have it. Brave Taylor, I appoint you royal high killer of the giant. <laughs> Giant? But, but your ma majesty, I, 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 I... And your reward shall be one million golden pazoozas. Oh, no, thank you, sir. But I, 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 I could... But two million pazoozas. <laughs> but I, 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 I don't... Uh, Three million, I, four, five, six... <laughs> what? Um, giant. And the hand of the Princess Minnie. Princess Minnie! Whoopee! Now cut him down to my size! Oh, <laughs> love that. Great. So cute. Minnie is so cute there. You know, Frank uh, just uh, had a great, uh, uh, wonderful ability. He was, yeah. but he was a taskmaster. Yeah. He was my first uh, supervising animator oh. on my first job on as a Disney animator, and uh, went working with him on Winnie the Pooh and Tigger too. Yeah. I showed him a little flip book of a Tigger scene I wanted to do of Tigger walking away sadly in the snow. Uh huh. Oh, that looks pretty good, but you got this wrong, and this is... He had me go back doing that 18 times. No, you're kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Wow, yeah. these guys knew their art form. Wow. Uh, interesting sidebar, we were actually paid in Pazuzas when we worked at the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Just to, wanted to throw that in. Um, so what's amazing to me is the black and white kind of Mickey Mouse from the time we went to that until what you just saw, which is Mickey is the actor yeah. instead of the little vaudeville sideshow, was just 10 years. Or less. Right. Or less. Or less, yeah. actually, yeah. yeah. And, and also at the same time they were doing that, they were doing these movies. They were doing Pinocchio and Dumbo and Fantasia. They were, they were expanding. Their talent pool was getting bigger. They were bringing in uh, art instructors from Chenard. Don Graham was teaching yep. the artists how to perfect their craft. And now Mickey had to share, was sharing the stage with Pinocchio, with Bambi, Dumbo. Mm -hmm. They were spending a million dollars a year during the Depression just on training, yeah. which is amazing. And, and before any other studio spent money on training, Walt was spending that because he knew how important it was mm -hmm. to get his animators to a certain level. Uh, probably one of the most famous and my favorite scenes in Disney animation. Let's take a quick look here. Drawn, ladies and gentlemen, with a pencil on paper. It's just it's amazing. Beautiful. And the, once again, this is Frank Thomas. This is Frank his, Thomas, yeah. 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 Interesting story about this scene, this little sequence. Walt basically was daring Frank not to do this. Why? Uh, because he thought it didn't work with the course of the story anymore. He actually wanted to cut it out. And he went into Frank's office one day and says, I don't want you working on that anymore. Really? Moonlighting, though, Frank did it anyway. Come on. They cut it in, they show it with Walt at a sweat box session with all the other story men, and he says, looks great, and walks out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, so fr I didn't know uh, that. Frank was always wondering, did Walt really mean that he didn't want me to do that or did he just plant that in my head so that I would do an amazing job and it would be so yes. good he couldn't turn it yes. down. Yeah, yes. that Walt was a smart guy. Yeah, he was. Um, it's just beautiful to watch and and kind of, you know, how can you create romance out of a cocker spaniel and you know, it, it, you just think it's and a plate of spaghetti. I mean, and a plate of spaghetti. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and yet he does it here yeah. so so brilliantly. So that's Frank. That's Frank. Um, Frank also did uh, uh, this scene in, in Mickey Mouse in The Pointer, right. 1939, a couple years after Snow White. Mm -hmm. So they're doing Mickey while they're doing features. These guys are busy working around the clock. This is a really good example of uh, what f the animator's drawing would look like. What, you've, what we've been seeing is a lot of the cleanup artist's work. But this is a really good example of Frank's actual hand. This is what his, his rough drawings uh, look like. And as we were watching that clip of uh, Brave Taylor, it got to reminding me again of how important Walt's contribution was for the voice. And Frank, there's a great story with uh, the pointer. Mickey's out hunting and he runs into this big bear. Well, Walt was doing the voice and they were filming live action of him and Frank asked him, can I you know, film you with a little camera to get to your performance. And Walt was like, no, nah, I don't want it. And he finally, Frank kept after him. He finally agreed and he said, well, if you're way back on the stage so I can't see you, Walt came in in very comfortable clothes, his favorite floppy hat, acted out this scene. And the one famous scene, the only w reason why we know about how tall Mickey is is because he goes, you know me, I'm Mickey Mouse, you know. Mickey Mouse, and he makes this gesture, which is what Walt acted out, and Frank had that on camera and used that as his really? live action reference as he you know, crafted his performance of that. So. Smart guy, that Frank. Very I got a smart question guy. for you. Now, is yeah. this the first Mickey with pupils? This was the period, yes. This yeah. was right around the transition period. Um, right. I think this film came out a little later, but the uh, Fantasia, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, is yes. credited as being the first uh, film with the new redesigned eyes. Uh, the pupil eyes that we well know today. Yeah, this is a 1938 model sheet of uh, Mickey Mouse and Fantasia would have been in process at the same time because that yeah. came out in 1940. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other kind of uh, nine old men and unsung heroes of animation uh, is this guy, Les Clark. Les Clark, Les. And what's astounding about Les is he started, uh, he, you know, he used to serve up food to Walt and Roy at the cafe across the street when he graduated from high school and said, hey, I have a portfolio. Uh, Walt said, well, yeah, come on in and we'll try you out for a while. And he stayed there for 40 years. And so he went from the, the kind of Steamboat Willie era, which you see here, uh, all the way to Fantasia and well beyond. Yes. Uh, he's probably somebody we didn't know that much. I never met him. I no, met I him once. Veteran designer and storyboard artist Ken Anderson yeah, introduced yeah. me to Les Clark. Oh. Les was a very distinguished looking guy. He yes. could have been in front of the camera as an actor, yeah, as a, you know, a, alongside being a great artist. He's the guy that actually did that beautiful Mickey scene with Mickey 
bringing the broom to life yeah. in Fantasia. Yeah. yeah, he was a, you know, when you think of Fantasia, which is probably one of the biggest star turns for Mickey Mouse, uh, so much of that is Les Clark, and here's mm -hmm. a model sheet from that era. Um, so you can see a little bit of what Les was doing, which I think is just amazing. Now, are um, you gonna show that little, that little Mickey scene there? Is that? I, I am, I, can I? Well, uh, this is an exclusive for all D23 because this was a piece of anime. I was so inspired by Disney animation. I actually did this when I was 14 years old as part of my first portfolio at Disney <laughs> Studios. This is my animation I have not seen until now. <laughs> when you were 14? When I was 14 years old, yeah. Well, that's a lesson for all of us. <laughs> start drawing a little bit faster. Be, wow. be kind. Be kind. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> That's, that's why I had no idea what peg holes on the paper were. It was just little sheets of typing paper. Yeah, yeah. God, that's amazing. It's beautiful, beautiful. Um, Mickey kept evolving. This is a, a model sheet as we get into the 40s, yeah, now, kind of yeah. during the war era and even beyond, uh, particularly for a short called Nifty 90s. Yeah. Uh, and who would have been responsible for this look? Once again, this has got to be... Fred Moore, Freddie Moore, so. Fred yeah, Moore yeah. was like streamlining Mickey, making more designed. And I think uh, there's a little Ward influence in there too. I think a those two were yes. kind of kindred spirits, and I think yeah. they uh, they kind of you know collaborated they, probably. Absolutely, these guys were so brilliant. Let's take a little look at a clip from Nifty '90s. chicken cross the road to get to the other side. <laughs> And of course, those were caricatures of themselves. That was so animated self-portraits. Yeah. I wondered if that was actually their voices. Too. I think it was. I think it was their voices. Ward Kimball so. and Freddie Moore. Yeah. Ward and Freddie. The the subtle comic styling. Of <laughs> Ward and Freddie. So back in the story room with Walt again from your book, John. Yes. Yes. Uh, Walt being a perfectionist and. You know, his story, story crew loved working with him, but they trembled at his feet, you know, getting ready to pitch a new board or a new sequence. You know, it was yeah. always kind of, you know, a, a tense moment for the story man. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew some of these guys. Interesting thing about this book, some of, the, uh, some of the guys that are pictured in this book, we all work together. The guy that's got his back towards us leaning against the storyboards there, leaning over is actually Ken Anderson. Aww. Joe Grant's in there. Ken O'Connor is leaning in the back. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's kind of a, a nice little moment. We were lucky boys. Because we were we, lucky, yeah. I started at the studio in 1976. Yeah, when I was there in 73. 1980. Yeah. 1980. It, it, was, it, was, so, it was a great time because yes. the animators were now willing, they've decided, okay, we, we're getting ready to retire, we need to hand yeah. over this legacy and yeah. all this knowledge on to a next generation of Yeah, artists. and we were so fortunate because we got to study at the feet of these great men and women who yep. uh, had virtually invented animation. Mm -hmm. um, fun and fancy free, one of my favorite package pictures. Uh, and Mickey evolves yet again. Um, what about this picture makes it special? Well, you know, Willie the Giant is a fun character, yep. voiced by Billy Gilbert, and uh, I think Lonsbury yeah, John Lonsbury. Yeah, uh, 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 John Lonsbury is one of the un great unsung great heroes unsung of the night. He is very quiet, was, introverted. Yes, but he was a dynamo yeah. on paper. If you remember the, uh, well, also in Lady and a Tramp, the uh, restaurant owners. Uh, Tony and Joe. Tony and Joe, oh, yes. that's all that's, animation from. Oh, yeah. 
John Lounsbury. Colonel yeah. Hottie in Jungle Book. Yeah, they all was John Lounsbury. Lounsbury. Yeah. And he, he did a mean Mickey Mouse. Let's take a look at a little clip from Fun and Fancy Free. I got you. I think I got you. Yeah, I got you. Willie. What? He'll have to talk fast to get out of this one. Well, you leave it to Mickey. Just watch. 10, 20, 30, 40. Boy, what a lifeline. But what's this here? What is it? What is it? Uh oh, I can't believe it. Is it bad? Why, it says here that you can change yourself into anything. Sure, sure. You want to see me? I can change myself into the darndest things. <laughs> Go on. Give me something. Anything. Anything? Anything. See? Mickey never misses a trick. He's got a good idea. Well, uh, can you change into a fly? A cute, teeny, weeny, itsy bitsy house fly? <laughs> That's it, a house fly. Ah, oh, you don't want to fly. How about a bunny with long pink ears? <laughs> well, of course, if you can't do a fly, why, uh. All right, a fly. Why? Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And Mickey's a little actor. You know? Yeah, he really is. Well, I think uh, the the other thing that's kind of a milestone for this period in this particular short was the voice change. What we heard was, I believe, Walt's voice. But this was also at the time when Walt was so busy, hmm. he finally turned to Jimmy McDonald, who was his favorite sound effects man, Foley yeah, yeah. artist, and said, "Can you do the voice?" Jimmy came in and. Did it, and Walt said, "Yeah, I think that sounds good." So I think Walt finished out, or you know, helped fill in. Uh, so Jimmy took over as a voice. He, Jimmy Mickey. McDonald was a cool guy. You know, Very he did cool all the guy. sound effects in uh, in Disney Animation, and I actually met him and got to work with him a little bit. And he trained Wayne Allwine, who eventually went on to do Wayne Mickey's be, voice. Right. Wayne, yeah. So right. it's a real kind of legacy there, and a, and a personal quality for how Mickey's voice matured. What are we looking at here? This is another model sheet. I think some of these poses was, were done by Fred Moore. We're getting into the yeah. 50s now. Yes. And again, Mickey is kind of reflecting you know, the more time. more casual. Yeah, this is kind of what we call the little man kind of period for Mickey. The proportions start to change a little bit. He gets a little taller. He looks more like a little little man. But it was, again, just uh, you know, artists pushing, pushing the boundaries. That's the one thing I was thinking about what's so neat about Mickey. He's actually a very welcoming character, and each artist, each animator that has touched Mickey has kind of you know, brought their personality, brought a little of themselves right. to the character, which kind of makes him a much richer character. Yeah, and he's, I love him because he's so sincere. There's mm -hmm. no cynicism to Mickey. He's just, you know, what you see is what you get. Absolutely. Um, during that era, during the 50s, uh, some of you and some of us grew up with the Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> uh, and that animation was really, really special. And we brought a clip along just to share a little animation of this is uh, Cowboy Mickey wearing his chaps. Friday. The, yeah. Roundup John Friday. Lounsbury's animation. John Lounsbury's animation John once Lounsbury again. again. Let's take a look at this next clip from the Mickey Mouse Club. Day, so, uh, you all pretty nigh ready? Shown up! Shown up. Then let's get on with it. Great stuff. It is great stuff. Now, some of you may be alarmed by this next visual. Um, <laughs> but this is Mickey Mouse 2, done yes. by a, 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 Who were these by? So this is Tom Orwe Oreb, uh -huh. who was a designer at Disney Studios for, for decades. And um, also an unsung hero, because he did designs for Sleeping Beauty and kind yeah. of a real mid-century modern artist mm -hmm. yes. who was terrific. And uh, at the same time, Disney was doing a lot of television commercials and making a lot of money on television commercials at a time when the studio needed money. Mm -hmm. right. they were, uh, and television was a new thing. So um, if some of you remember or are old enough, there was a uh, car company called American Motors, and they made a beautiful car called the Rambler. <laughs> uh, and he, hold your applause, please. Um, <laughs> Here's Mickey Mouse and Minnie, and uh, like there are two kids in the back seat. I don't know what yeah, the deal is with that. Uh, yeah. but, um, and, and a lovely commercial for Nash Rambler. Let's take a look. 
We'll have to turn the sound up on this because it's really low. This is a really rare little print. It's a completely new idea in automobiles. The daring, dazzling 1955 Rambler, now at all Nash dealers. Never before has the car so fine been priced so low. Here's a whole new idea in styling. The rakish continental look with plenty of room for the whole family. Here's a new idea in luxury. The new 1955 Rambler offers complete year-round <laughs> air conditioning. Morty and Ferdy, I don't know. <laughs> in summer. Live a little. Drive a Rambler. <laughs> the new Rambler, a car that uh, handles and parks like a dream. looks like the studio dream. lot. A car with the shortest I think it was. The studio. Of That's the studio. Between the sound stages. <laughs> Here's a yeah. new idea in safety. Double strength, single unit body. Stronger, safer, completely rattle-proof. <laughs> See important. and drive the new 1955 <laughs> Rambler, now on display at all Nash showrooms. Still another reason why American Motors means more for Americans. See your Nash dealer. Get more car for your money when you buy, more money for your car when you trade. Live a little, drive a Rambler. Who are those guys? Hey. I don't know. <laughs> That's, that film is a relic. That is That amazing. is a relic. That is rarely I shown. mean, I, I had a 63 Rambler classic. Did you? Did I know. used to drive to Art Center with the students in my car from the boarding house. It was, I'll it be was, darned. I had that car for at least six months, and then, and then somebody had to yeah. throw it away. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's how long they lasted. It uh, lot, so what so. was Walt's reaction to that new Mickey, uh, new Mickey model? Did he? I have no idea. I don't think Walt was a huge mid-century fan, but his artists were lapping it up. People like Mary Blair and all that well, stuff, they loved yeah. it. <laughs> UPA it was yeah. a huge competitor at that time, and I think, and they were doing a lot of commercials, too. And I'm wondering if this was just a their version of kind of that sharper, you know, more graphic look yes. that they were putting out there. So. There was a lot of pull into modernism in the art mm -hmm. world, the Picassos of the world and things into, and then modernism was all about stripping away detail and making yeah. the shapes as simple as possible. Um, and also during this, you know, 1955, Walt was opening Disneyland, so yes. he yeah. had his hand full with that, and yeah. the studio was really successful on yeah. these. Yeah. Hey, here's a Mickey uh, from now these, you, yeah, the, Palmer, uh, right? yeah, these, these are something that I did uh, about two and a half years ago. Mickey bumpers are what these are called. These are like two second little Mickey, Mickey scenes. Mickey bumpers. Mickey bumpers. Yeah, I'm, they, I'm they went on either side of the new Mickey Mouse cartoons that would be extended <laughs> into commercial breaks and then yeah. coming back again. So I had to do about 25 of these. Wow. Well, and so they're just little quickie little scenes that are strung together that, uh, you know. a little uh, John Palmer push, animation. Push the Mickey product. This is real rough pencil animation you're seeing without in-betweens or anything. Yeah, it's a post-test. Post-test, yeah. yes. Absolutely. He's cute. Mickey bumpers. Mickey, Mickey bumpers. bumpers. I love that. I'm actually wearing Mickey bumpers right now. <laughs> um, who's this guy? Uh, on the left here. Um. Oh, so that, you know, uh, somehow that found its way into the presentation, but that's a watercolor that I did for our, my high school yearbook. Yes. And it's the spitting image of our son, Ian. But that's so, you, right? It's but, you, but, though. But it looks like me, yes. Yes. It, it, it could be me in a, in a Angola it's sweater. You. It's you, it's the young Pomeroy. <laughs> I, had to, I, I have a clip coming up of the young Mark Hen. So we have the young Pomeroy, here's the young Don Hahn. Oh man, that's really oh, good. Yeah. All that right. Was, yeah, it shows the effect of 30 years of gravity oh, on the, uh, <laughs> sadly, on Don Hahn. That's uh, why you gotta wear those bumpers, huh? Yes, yeah, I know. Thank God for those. No. Um, no. Here's the young Mark Hen on Mickey's Christmas Carol. Let's listen. Be kind. <laughs> well, in the animators, uh, Mark Hen proved Terrific when it came to Mickey. I'm down here taking a look at a Mickey scene from uh, Mickey and the Beanstalk. Wow. Uh, Freddie Morgan. In the morgue. <laughs> in the morgue, was, yes. Uh, one There's of the top Freddy. Mickey animators that the studio ever had. Matter of fact, he was fairly much responsible for the look and style of Mickey that we, we know today. Like looking in a uh, mirror, huh? Uh, <laughs> so he's kind of the pioneer of Mickey. Through what a Freddy haze. came up with was a lot more fluid <laughs> shape in the body and which allowed for a, a lot looser, freer kind of animation, a little more expressive in that sense. 
And then with the addition to the pupil eyes, then they were able to get a little more expression, you know, than what they had with the shoe button. That's eyes. actually a very good example of showing the how the evolution yeah. of Mickey works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he's become more than just a cartoon character, and I think that has a lot to do with it. And people think of him as a friend, and uh, I think they're just happy to see him back again, you know. And I think that has a lot to do with the uh, fact that he's just more than just a drawings on paper, you know, but he, he represents a, 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 a style, a, a personality that you know, a lot of people like. He's just a very likable person and a mouse. And uh, hmm. I think, you know, it's good to see him back at work again. Young Mark Hen. <laughs> yeah. Ow. <laughs> oh. But uh, yeah, so, you know, um, for me, I, as I said, I, I started in 1980, and um, within, within about a year after going through the training, uh, Bernie, that was Bernie Mattinson, who just recently celebrated 65 years at the studio. Wow. He's now the longest uh, employee, still longer there. than Walt, and he's yep. still there. Um, but he was, you know, uh, my director on uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol, and he saw a test that I did as I was looking to get promoted, and I had done a Mickey test. And he saw it, like he said, and, and uh, you know, asked me to come on to work on uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol. So I, you know, my first animation gig at the Walt Disney Studios was animating Mickey Mouse. And I was just like, as you could see, I was still a bit stunned uh, uh, <laughs> in the morgue down there, which, which is really neat. That's what we call the morgue. All the artwork uh, is, was kept down there. And it's literally, at that time, was in the basement. And you will hear... Uh, from others here now in our archives and our animation research library. They take much better care of the artwork now, but it was literally in the basement of the ink and paint building. We were really privileged back then, though, to have access we to did. that because we can get all the original drawings of John Lounsbury, Frank Thomas, uh, Freddie Moore, take a look at their drawings, flip yeah. them. A any of the films, you could either say, well, I want to go down and look at a scene from Snow White. You could yeah. take it, check it out, go back to your desk. Our pegs were the same on our drawing table, so you could literally put it back down there, flip through the drawing, and, and kind of self you know, learn. You can get on the phone and call for 50 scenes from Pinocchio, yeah. and Don and Hahn would, would bring him up to you in a wagon. Because Don Hahn started in the morgue. In art yeah. props. Yeah, right? I did. I did, yeah. yeah. That's a whole other story. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're talking about Mickey's Christmas Carol, uh, which I worked on too. I love yes. I loved that movie. That's when you and and I we brought a together. little clip of Mark Hand's animation of Mickey Mouse, which I think is just exquisite. Um, here's a little Mickey Mouse from Mickey's Christmas Carol. He's Bob Cratchit, right? The Bob Cratchit character. Mm, yes. Two minutes fast. Perfect casting. Well, never mind those two minutes. You may go now. Ha! Oh, thank you, sir. You're so kind. Never mind the mushy stuff. Just go. But be here all the earlier the next day. I will. I will, sir. And the bar humbug. <laughs> I mean, a Merry Christmas to you, sir. That's was, great animation. Was that Alan Young? The voice that was of Alan Scrooge? Young, yeah. the voice of Scrooge. And yeah. as I mentioned in the little clip, this was the first legitimate Mickey appearance in 30 years because yeah. Simple Things in 1953 was Mickey's last short. And I, Freddie Moore worked on that. It was yeah. one of his yeah. last pieces yeah. that he did. Yeah. So in 1983, Mickey's Christmas Carol came out, and that was uh, the first time. And just a couple years later, you were animating uh, double Mickey Mouses, of which that's Mickey Mouse, that's whatever the plural of Mises, mouses is. Mice, 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 Mice. Um, in Prince and the Pauper. Let's take a look at some of Mark's animation from that. Did you co-animate on that scene, or was well, actually, this actually this specific scene was actually Andreas, right? Andreas Deja, Andreas Deja, mm -hmm. good friend of ours, 
and yeah. uh, there you go, yeah. give a hand out to Andreas. But I, when I was looking at this clip, it reminds me, this was actually, I could say, the year of the mouse for me, because not only was I animating on this project, I was also doing Rescuers Down Under. So I had Bernard and Bianca that I was wow. animating. You were just up to your ears um, in mice. And we had just opened, yeah, I was, uh, it was, I was up to my ears in mice, you're right. And they had just opened in 1989. I finished my work on The Little Mermaid, and I packed up my family and moved over to this little park over here called the Disney MGM Studios when they opened the animation studio. So for 10 years, I worked down here at the animation studio where I animated a lot of our uh, uh, films uh, that I got to work with you on. But in this case, for this, this was early on in the production. Um, we were kind of, I don't say freelancing, but we were, you know, carved out a few sequences. So I got to do mostly the Prince version of Mickey in that, and then as well as doing Bernard and Bianca for Rescuers That's down a lot under. of mice. So there was a lot of mice that year for me. Uh, and, and then Mickey came full circle because just a couple years ago, uh, uh, the studio animated this amazing 3D short called Get a Horse, and it was Oscar nominated. And there's a little clip here that I think is extraordinary because this was animated, I mean, literally in the past 10 years, uh, five years ago probably. Yeah, yeah 2013. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So here's uh, Get a Horse. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's get a horse. Fun. That was get a horse. That's fun. You know what's interesting? You guys had to kind of go back in a time machine and recreate the gag sense and the look of the animation the, back in the old the, the crazy, 20s and 30s. The crazy thing is we had to literally forget everything that we had been taught about yeah. animation yeah. and the subtleties and all that that goes in <laughs> and go back to the that really 1928, 29, early 30s version. So that was a lot of fun. I mean, that was kind of the, the, the joke of the whole thing that we wanted people to believe that this was really an old film that had been recently discovered and then of course it goes on where they fun. pop through the screen and get into the CG world but it was a lot of fun and that that scene I did at the beginning there with uh, Naked Mickey there uh, uh, with the fence strategically placed. <laughs> Naked Mickey, a but yeah it was, shop, actually, it was yeah. just uh, <laughs> we spent a lot of time looking at those old films and trying to you know you know, strip away everything about what we'd known about animation and just get back to the very, very basics. You just go from here to here, and that's it. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to wrap up with this week because you were asked to, for a really big honor, uh, we're here to celebrate Mickey's birthday, which we're really honored to be here. Uh, John Hench did these amazing posters over the years, each year to celebrate a decade or so of Mickey's life. A few years ago in, in uh, 2008, Paul Felix did this uh, to yeah, celebrate this Mickey's 80th. birthday. Yeah. Um, and Mark, you were asked to do uh, Mickey's commemorative poster for his 90th birthday. His 90th birthday, yes. Um, yeah, it's a huge. Thank you. That yeah, was quite an honor. I was real honor. I was. Uh, I kind of looked like that young version of me, kind of just like huh? uh -huh. <laughs> deer in the headlights uh, when they when they asked me. I was I was very honored it's to have that. It's a huge honor. Let's take a look at this next clip um, of Mark working. Uh, and, and what's amazing here is this is not time lapse. You actually work very fast. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at him throw that paint on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, this was uh, this is uh, the studio at, 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 in my garage. That I have a studio in my garage at home. Uh, the total time uh, for painting the piece was about 30 hours total, and so they set up a GoPro camera over over my head there. And each oh. time I went into the studio, I would turn the camera on when I would have a, a session painting. And uh, so it, it took a picture, took a frame every 30 seconds. So you've got 30 hours condensed down into about two minutes here. I think somebody said they counted. I changed shirts like eight times. So uh, <laughs> yes. for all those that are counting. You've done that but, today, cool. though, too. Yeah, uh, I, I yeah. did. I didn't know what the word it yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, let's take a look. There it is. There it is. Final so. poster. Mark Hen. Thank you. Nice job.
Um, the, what I love about animators, these guys can get in, crawl into the skin of just about any character. And uh, there's a great new movie coming out called Ralph Breaks the Internet. And uh, most of the princesses that you've seen over the last few years, so many of them have been animated by these guys, and especially Mark. Uh, who's animated Belle and uh, you know and so many on of those characters, on and on. And on yeah. and on. Ariel, um, and all of them make a wonderful cameo appearance uh, in this hilarious movie coming up. But you also animated Mickey, and I have a, a clip. You have to watch really closely. Yes, yeah, so I actually got to do a little bit of uh, traditional animation for uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, and it's you'll have to look for it, but Here it's comes. in there. Here comes. On top of the hat. Oh. But there's also more, but that's in another scene. You have to go to the movie and see it. It's a little, a little bit of an Easter egg kind of planted in there for you. Yes, so Mickey's still alive and well. Uh, yes. Yeah, Mark. So that's what's next with you, Mark. We're uh, so glad you're here with us today. John, uh, this book that we've been showing pieces of yes, yeah. uh, is out right now. Yeah, so this started uh, back in 2012. I was approached by uh, Disney Hyperion Publishing. Mm -hmm. They do a series called Big Words Books, and they've mm -hmm. done Helen Keller, Martin Luther King, Abraham Lincoln, John F. Kennedy, mm -hmm. John Lennon, and now they wanted to do Walt Disney. And you illustrated it. And I, they, it was an honor uh, to be able to illustrate all of Walt's life from childhood all the way up to the opening of Disneyland. Yeah, and it's a treasure. Um, and I, just to put in a shameless plug, uh, curated a show about the Nine Old Men up at the Yay. Disney Family Museum. Um, great show. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, great show. So we are very blessed and very lucky to have studied with those guys. Uh, so that shows up there until January. I also just finished a, a documentary on Howard Ashman, which will be out next year. So Yay. thank you. Um, it's, uh, we'll be back later in the day in different forms to do different things. But thank you all for uh, kind of sitting in on this great history of Mickey. And thank you. Please join me in thanking Mark Hen and John Pomeroy. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>